can't keep talking about the people who lived in America in the early 1900s. We can't talk about people, Henry Ford, the Vanderbilts. We are the Vanderbilts of this time frame. We are the Fords of this time frame. We're the Louis Vuittons of this time. We're the Hiltons of this time. We're the Marriott's of this time. It's our time. It's our turn. Ford is gone. It's our time. It's our time for our family to understand wealth. It's our time to take our wives on a trip for 30 days and not have to worry about anything. It's our time for them to get manicures and pedicures. It's our time to let them live a certain life. It's our time. It's our turn. It's our country. Let's eat it up. Let's enjoy it. Come on, one, two, three, make some noise. All right, everybody, make some noise. Yeah, let's go. Hey, I'm your boy E.T. Do me a quick favor. Pull out your phones. Please, please, don't sit down. Pull out your phones. I want you to do me a huge favor. Huge favor, huge favor. I want you to put at least two or three of the most important people in your phone. I want you to text yourself. All right, before we get started, we got to get in some context. I want you to text. I want you to text yourself those names. For me, it's Dee Dee, it's Jalen, it's Jada, it's Vanessa, my mom. I want you to write those names out. Then I want you to shoot those names. I want you to shoot those names. Right now, now what I want you to do, right, and it, it, however you want to do it, but I want you to write a promise note to them. Like after today, I don't want it to be about you anymore. I want it to be about them. All right. And so I, to Jalen and Jada and Dee Dee and my mom. I promise to be the best version of myself so that I can be all that I can be. I can have all I can have, and I can do all I can do so I can be a blessing to them. All right, so just real quick, I just want, just you can, whatever you want to text to yourself, I want you to text a promise to yourself, all right? I want you to text a promise to yourself real quick. I promise, all right, whatever it is, to uh, make as much money as I possibly can while I'm here on earth. I promise to love you as much as I possibly can. I promise to be an example to you. I promise to open up doors to you. I promise to be a person of wisdom, right? Whatever it is, I want you to write, I want you to write that to them, right? All right, we're going to get started. We're going to get started, but this is important. This, this context is important. Now, here's why I'm asking you to do that. Here's, 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 one of the, here's, one of the, here's one of the joys, right, for us right now being in Texas. Here's a joy, that whatever you write down because you live in the United States of America is possible. Now, I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to me. This is important. There are some countries, right, some third world countries that it does not matter what time you wake up. It does not matter what time you go to bed. It does not matter how hard you work. It does not matter how much you read or how much you study. It doesn't matter. You can go all in. You can give 120%, but because it's a third world country and the resources are not the same, it's not possible for you to be a millionaire. It's not possible for you to uh, see the things you're going to see here in this country. It's just not possible. And so because you live in the United States of America, too much is given, much is required. I'll say it again. Too much is given, much is required. And because we live in this country, we will be held accountable for how we took advantage of America. So one of the things I want you to do, I just want to stop real quick, stop real quick. Right? And we've got we've to embrace the fact that we have resources in this country. We've got to embrace the fact that if you never wanted to travel outside the United States of America, I promise you, it, between uh, all the states, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, you don't have to go anywhere else to see the splendor that you're going to see in this country. There's no other place that you're going to go where they print money every day. And so on three, I want you to scream with me, USA, USA, one Two, three, USA. USA. Come on. USA. USA. Come on, say it like you mean it. USA. 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 Now listen to me very closely. You're going to be held accountable. All of the opportunities, right? So yeah, I was homeless and I was a high school dropout. So I woke up one day and was like, yo, E, it's way too much money in this country for you to be a high school dropout. And I went and got my GED, and I went from a GED to a PhD. Listen to me. I was living in abandoned buildings before I was considered number one in the world. And I woke up one day, and I realized Eric Thomas, 
There is riches all around you, human resources, fiscal resources, material resources. You live in the United States of America. Your son deserves the best possible life. Your daughter deserves the best possible life. Your mama deserves the best possible life. Get your butt out to bed, grind from sunup to sundown, and live the American dream. Now listen to me, I had to realize, there, it exists, they're not going to give it to you, but if you're willing to get up every day and go take it, if you're willing to get up every day and work for it, if you're willing to get up every day and grind for it, you can have the life that other people dream of. So one more time, USA, one, two, three. USA, come on, come on, USA, come on. USA, You might be seated now. Let's go. Let's get ready. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Who's ready? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Who's ready? Let's go. Now, look, before we get started, before we get started, I need you to be honest with yourself. Right? So we're going to say that the opportunities in America is 120%. Right? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to be honest. I want you to write to yourself what percentage are you giving. If I give it 50%. Like, for real, E, I'm not talking about what they're asking me for. Like, I, I know in this industry what I'm doing. I know the effort that I'm getting for. I want you to just be honest with you. I'm, I'm giving 50%. I'm super talented. I'm giving 50%. Right? We're not comparing ourselves to anybody. I'm just saying, what percentage are you giving? E.T., I'm giving 70%. Right? I'm giving 80%. Maybe you're giving 90%. I don't know. But I want you to write that down and send it to yourself. And I want you to be honest. Nobody's, going, nobody's grading you. This is only something you can see. Right? And I want you to know that if you want to get to the next level, as your effort and commitment goes up, everything else is going to go up. Look, uh, America is America. But when I was a high school dropout living in abandoned buildings, I did not experience the same America I experience now. Be before I had my PhD, I was experiencing the American dream, but I didn't, I'm not experiencing it the way I experienced with a, with a PhD, working in schools. Like, this is a total different... Uh, before I wrote a book, failed English three times, that was a different experience than when I actually finished, got the PhD, and began to write books. It's a different experience. So what I want you to do is I want you to stop crying about what's happening externally, and I want you to start blaming. Look, I, I want you to stop playing the blame game. I want you to stop saying that I don't have this or this isn't happening for me or I'm not living like other people and I don't have. I want you to stop playing the blame game. In America, it is possible, and it's also possible that if you're not living it, you're not doing something you're supposed to do. And so I want you to be honest. Real quick, I know everybody can't do this. This takes a lot of transparency, but for real, if you're like, yeah, I know I'm super gifted, bro, I'm not even, I promise you, I'm not even giving, I'm giving 50%. I'm not giving all, I'm not giving everything. Let me see. Honestly, you're like, I'm giving 50%. I see you, hands down. E, I'm probably giving about 70% of my talent I'm giving about 70%. Let me see your hands. I would just be honest, 70%. Somebody in the room like, E.T., I ain't 100 yet, but I'm probably giving about 80%. Let me see your hands real quick. I'm giving 80%. I just want, look, flat out gut check, gut check, gut check. Why gut check? Because if I do self-assessment, if I really take an inventory on who I am, the, the, the level of execution, the level of effort, if I look at my attitude, Right? And it's not 120%, and I make the adjustment. If I make the adjustment, my wife's 50th birthday, my wife, I said, sweetheart, what do you want to do? She's like, I don't really know, you know, maybe stay. I said, okay, if you don't know, I know, 50th, let's go. So I'm going to take you to Hawaii. Started talking to my wife, you know, and she was like, okay, we're going to Hawaii, but, you know, it's my 50th. I don't want to go without the kids. I said, all right, call my, all right, kids, bring the kids. <laughs> They're like, okay, what you want? I said, ocean view. What about for the kids? Ocean view. Now, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I don't want my kids to come to my room to see the ocean view and then want to be in my room for the ocean view. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I get the ocean view, they don't. They're going to be in my room the whole time for the ocean view. I'm like, get your own ocean view. So my wife said to me the other day, she's like, I'm not trying to be funny. You know, it's, I thank you so much, Hawaii. You know, I, you picked out these great places. You know, and again, my wife doesn't like to rest, so we're not doing the little beach. Like, she wanted to go where she could see the water and, and, the, whole, and the shopping centers at, at one time. She was like, I want a choice. I want to get up and get the sand, but by 12, I want to eat and hit the mall all day. I said, great, right? Look, we're by 80% though, and I could tell something was wrong. I said, sweetheart, what's going on? She was like, I didn't want to say anything, but it's my 50th. 
I was like, okay, what's going on? You got me there? You know, first of all, I'm thinking that should be, you know? Well, you're 50, if I'm coming, I think it just should be me. I thought that would be enough. And she's like, I don't know if I want to look in your face for 10 straight days. Alone. I was like, okay, no problem. We got your birthday, then a couple days later, our anniversary. So I said, kids, I got it. So I could tell though, she still wasn't there. And I said, what's missing? She said, I know it's a bit much. You know, you're doing first class tickets and you're flying folk in. You're not, but how, can my mom come out and say, your mom? Yeah, your mom can come. <laughs> my cousin got to do mom first class. Mom need an ocean view. Because if mom don't have one, she's going to be in the kids' room bothering them. And they're going to call me and bother me. So get grandma. Listen to what I'm saying. What I'm telling you is we live in America. Everybody can have an ocean view. Yeah. We live in America. Everybody can have an ocean view. Everybody can fly first class. And so I remember when we were flying, the lady was like, well, you guys, you know, you can fly first class, but she's going to have to get on that plane. So I said, ma'am, just find me a plane that we can all get in and be together on first class. Like, I don't want to split up. Why? Because I want to be, I want to make memories on this 50th. I can have whatever I want. Why? I live in America. I can fly first class. I can live. We can. So what I'm trying to explain to you before we get started, you are blessed to be in an industry that has a straight path to whatever you want. Oh, come on, I'm going to say it again. I thought I got about 12 of y'all is excited. Okay. Now, y'all got to remember, as a Christian and pastor, I'm used to an African-American church. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? I'm not used to the quiet thing here, right? I just got this group clapping, this group. I need the whole. I said, you live in America, and you are in an industry where you can have whatever you want. All right, I'm... I got the front and the middle. Now I'm going to get the back. Okay, let's, we're going to do it again. I said you don't live in a third world country. I said you don't live in a country where they tell you what you can do for a living and how much money you can make and where you go grocery shopping and what you have. I said you live in a country where there is unlimited resource, abundance, and you are in an industry that you can have what you want, be what you want, and do what you want. You ought to be excited about that. Come on, I got to hear you in the back. You ought to be excited about that. You ought to be excited about that. Listen to me, and before I get started, I want to, I want to, before I get started, I want, I, I want to make sure you understand something. I'm not saying that they're, going, they're not going to be obstacles, but you live in America. Can't nobody stop you. I want to make sure that's, I want to make sure that's 100% clear. So when people come to me and tell me, hey, E, we got these problems in this country, this problem, I say, I don't even know what you're talking about. That, that's not my reality. I'm not, I, don't, I'm, I don't live in that. I live in abundance. I, I, li I live in a country where I was homeless and a high school dropout that my mama got pregnant with me at 17 years old. And she was homeless. And now I'm considered the number one motivation. Come on, only in America can you start there and get here. And so I want you to, I want you to write down for me, I want you to write down for me, I want you to write down what, you, what you're going to do in the next three months, the next six months, the next nine months, the next year for those people whose name you wrote down and we're gonna get started. So I want you to write that down. What are you gonna do for them? I'm, I, I wanna be transparent real quick. I wanna be transparent. I hope my son isn't listening to this. I want to be transparent. I wish I could put the picture up for you, but uh, my son uh, graduated from Michigan State. He was a uh, general manager for the, uh, the Coach Izzo for four years. And, um, you know, it, some of his guys that he was a general manager to, uh, they're actually in the league. And so one of the players that he works with, Brent Forbes, he plays for the Milwaukee Bucks. Right? I, listen to me. I turned, the, I turned the TV on the other day. And my son was on whatever the little bus is where they doing the celebration, the parade. My son is on the actual bus with the Greek freak. And I'm looking like, is that my son with the Greek freak? And he holding the trophy. <laughs> and he got the camera taken. Right, and I was talking to somebody and they said, you know, my financial person is like, yo, we did the financial statement and last month your son blew out the trick card, charge card. I was like, he, what did he do? He blew out the charge card. I said, what was he doing? He was in Milwaukee, apparently. He, that my son was traveling with the team. He was with the team. He was spending money like he played on the team. <laughs> <laughs> my man, he, like, he played on the squad. I, was, I told him, count the numbers up for me. Just count it up for me. How much money did he spend? I looked, it was like he spent in a month 11 grand. 
Listen to me. They called us like, Mr. Thomas, he spent 11 grand. I said, he just spent it like he's an heir now. He ain't waiting for me to die. <laughs> My man ain't waiting. He like, dad's here. Dad making money. Why wait till he leave? I'm going to be the prince of Bel Air right this very second. <laughs> Listen to me. And you can do that in America. You missed what I just said. And when they were talking to me about the 11 grand, I said, listen to me, how is he going to learn how to do money if he don't ever spend none of it? So sit him down and walk him through everything he did. And then ask him, can he make 11,000? And if he tells you he can't, then spend time teaching him how to use his gift to make the 11. We live in America. I don't have to fret. They, they print money every day. We're going to get some more of it. <laughs> we, oh, you missed what I just said. <laughs> they print money. I'm not scared about him spending money. They print money. What they're not printing is the experience to be with the buck. They, you don't get a chance to be in the finals every, you don't get to stand on it. you don't get to be with the Greek freak, so go spend all that money. Why? Because that experience is gonna change your life forever. I, just, I thought I was talking to people that was ready to take it to the next level. Listen to me, I wanna say it one more time. They print money. They don't print time. That's right. They don't print opportunities. They print money every day. They print it every day. You can lose money and get it back. You can't get time back. You can't get experiences back. You ain't going to necessarily be with the Greek freak. You're not going to be in a place where you can hold a trophy every, every year. I said they're printing money. Don't worship it. I said don't worship it. They print money. Worship getting your time back with your family. Average people focus on money. The greats focus on time because I can't get my time back. I can't ever get my time back. Somebody said, to COVID, I can't get back that COVID year. I can't get it back. Now, Cody's smart. He got me before COVID ended. I got now the post-COVID prices that I'm charging now. <laughs> I'm, just char I'm just charging 25,000 more because I made it. I said, why are you charge so much? I said, I made it out of COVID. <laughs> you got to pay me for making it out of COVID. I was smart enough not to get sick. You got to pay for that. Listen to me. They're printing money. There's some stuff I learned during COVID. You got to pay me for that. They're printing money. Don't focus on money. They print money. Focus on finding out what you do well, finding out the gaps that you can fill, find out what you can do. Listen to me. People talk about the pandemic. What do you think about the pandemic? Listen to me. Our company blew up in the first recession in 2008, 2009. The first one. Why? Because we start providing a service to the world that nobody else was providing. Oh, I shouldn't say that. We start providing in a way. I want you to think about what you do. How can you do what you do in a way that nobody else does it? So I shouldn't say we, we didn't produce anything. We didn't create anything. Les Brown was doing it. Tony Robinson was doing it. But they weren't doing it the way we were doing it. See, they, Ziggs was doing it, but what they would do is they do like a 30-second or 60-second promo, and then they tell you to get this in its to, in, uh, to, entirety, you got to spend so much money, and then they're going to ship it to you. Right? So you call Tony Robbins, you call Les Brown, and you bought their DVD or their cassette tape. Some of you know what I'm talking about, cassette tape. You know what I'm talking about. You look at me, I see some people looking at me funny. Don't look at me like that. You know cassette tape. You remember you had to put the tape on it because it broke. <laughs> it was a good tape, so you try to fix it. Watch this. So you were in the midst of a divorce, and you called Les Brown, and you ordered it. But it took about three to four weeks for you to get it. And by the time you get it, y'all already had a divorce. <laughs> that four weeks it took to get it, you already had a divorce. So what we start doing was giving away content for free. And I would give about 20 minutes of motivational weight for free every Monday. And then I start giving it away every day. Oh, come on, bring it from the bottom. What up, what up, what up? It's your boy, E.T. Thank God it's Monday. Oh, you better watch yourself over there. Watch this. I did the same thing they were doing it, but I did it a different way. I found the gap. Find the gap. 
Don't complain. Don't murmur. Don't talk negative. That's ar average people talk normal. Average people talk problems. The greats talk solutions. Average people use their time to whine and complain. Average people say it's their boss fault. It's their mother's fault. It's their co average people. I used to be average. I used to say, when is my daddy coming to get me? When is my biological father going to come in my life? And when I would talk like that, I ended up getting kicked out of school. And while I talk like that, I ended up being homeless. And while I talk like that, I was broke. And then one day I woke up and said, Eric, nobody's coming to save you. Nobody's coming to get you. But you can go to the library and get yourself. You can start reading books. You can go back to school. You can start coming to conferences. And I went from an average way of talking and behaving to taking ownership and saying, yo, E, it's your fault. Somebody said, how's it your fault your daddy's not in your life? I said, listen to me. I tried the blame game. It didn't work. I'm nowhere where I want to be, so I'm just going to take ownership. Why, at the end of the day, is my life is not his? I don't know where he is. I don't know what he's doing, but apparently I ain't that important that he came looking for me. So stop crying about it and do something about it. Go get your GED and go to college. Get out of the city of Detroit and start all over again. But I was blessed to get my GED and go to Alabama. Southern hospitality, unbelievable. Let me tell you something. What I love about the South is like they'll put you on punishment if you don't say hello. I love it. And like in the South, you gotta say hi every time you see him. Like I saw you this morning, how you doing? In the afternoon, how you doing? I said, I saw you this morning. Well, it's afternoon now, how you doing? I'm like, I'm doing good. Then I see him at night, how you doing? I said, you just spoke to me twice today. It's at night, how you doing? And then we stop and we talk. I love Southern hospitality. If you have it, okay, we're gonna leave that alone. All right, so, so say it with me. I will never be average on three. One, two, three. All right, some of you saying it average. You know what I'm saying? I will never be average. <laughs> Say it like you mean it. One, two, three. I will never be average. Good, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. One, two, three. I will never be average. I will take ownership. We're going to add that. One, two, three. I will never be average. I love it. I love it. She got it. We're going to do it together. We're going to do it together. I will never be average. I will take ownership. One, two, three. Mm. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. We're going to get it out of you right now. We gonna, you 8%. You the 8% or the 92%. We're going to get it out of you. We're going to get it out of you. On three, we're going to get it out of you. When you leave this room, you will take full ownership. And the reason why I say it's my fault, even when it's not my fault, because when I say it's your fault, I give you power. I give you control over my life. And I will never give another human control over my life. It's my fault. It's my problem. I'm coming up with a solution for it. It's my fault. It's my problem. It's my solution. I'm taking ownership. Come on, say it with me. I'm taking ownership. Come on, I'm taking ownership. Come on, I'm taking, I'm taking ownership. I need everybody to sit down. Here's, here's what I need you to do. If your father wasn't in your life, your mother wasn't in your life, you were a foster child, something bad happened to you, somebody verbally, sexually abused you, it's not your fault. But if you've been giving power to those people, I want you to stand right now and take your power. Where are you? I want you to stand and say, I'm not doing it no more. I'm not giving nobody else power no more. I'm taking it. Where are you? I need you to stand. I need you to stand. I need you to stand. Listen to me closely. I'm not saying it's your fault, but it's your solution. I'm not saying you didn't do it, but you owe it to yourself in this country to let that stuff go so you can be what you're supposed to be. Now, I'm going to count to three because there's somebody else. You got a lot of pride. And that's why you're where you are right now. Let your ego go. You were amongst family. Let your ego go. You're amongst family. Let it go. You need to stand because you're still holding somebody else hostage for what they did to you. And I need you to let it go. Where are you? I want you to stand right now. One. Thank you. Thank you. Two. Thank you. 
Let it go. Come on, let it go. Let it go. Come on, let it go. Where? I see you. I see you. I see you. Come on, somebody else. Come on. This is just number one. I got to get past this one. I got to get past number one. You're, you're still sitting. Come on, you're sitting. Come on. Let it go. Let her go. Let him go. They don't, they don't, you don't, they don't deserve that much power over your life. Let them go. I know they hurt you. Let it go. They only still have power because you're still holding on to it. Stop being average. Average people can't forgive. Average people can't let go. The greats, we do whatever it takes for self-preservation. We do whatever it takes to be happy. You think I wanted to let my biological father off the hook? You think I want to let him off the hook? He left my mom. He left me. You think I want to let my man off the hook? I was with my family my whole life. I thought he was a friend of my family. I didn't know he was my father. I know my grandma. I know my aunts. I know my cousin. I just thought he was a friend of the family. And I asked him why. He said, your mother said. I said, my mother said. How dare? No, you're right. My mother said. That wasn't the answer I was looking for. But if that's the answer you have, I'll take it and I'll take the rest of my life and I'll be happy the rest of my life. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, I want you to say, I want you to say with me, I can, I will, I must. Come on, I can. This is your life, not mine. You should be more excited about your life than I am. I can. I can. I will. I must get past this. I can. I will. I must. Hold on one second, one quick second, because I want to talk to the successful people. You too can get past the success you're living right now. You, you're not finished. If you're alive, you're not finished. I know you feel good about yourself because you're doing better than your brother and your sister. You're killing a lot of Americans. <laughs> but the creator ain't comparing you to your sister. He's comparing to you the gifts that you have. He's not comparing you to your brother. No, I'm going to say it one more time. The creator is not comparing you to your sister. Your mama might be thinking, you, your mama, like, she's killing the game compared to her brothers and sisters. <laughs> she's the best in our family. That doesn't mean that the creator, that doesn't mean, that don't mean the creator is going well done. You still got more in you. So I want you to say, because you're looking at them like, oh, yeah, y'all can. <laughs> we did. <laughs> you must. <laughs> no, no, you got another gear in you. So everybody, I can. I can. I can. I can. Because I'm capable. Because I'm capable. I will. I will. Because, I'm because I'm strong. I must. Because they counting on me. No, 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 no. I was homeless, y'all. I was homeless. That's why I don't mind my son spending 11 grand. I was homeless. I don't ever want him and his sister to know what it's like to be homeless. People say, well, they've got to go through it. They do, but don't, not homeless, God. You can figure something else out. <laughs> a heartbreak or something. You know what I'm saying? Not homeless. Are you hearing me? I, I, I must. I live in America. There are other people that are inspired by me. We, we can't keep talking about the people who lived in America in the early 1900s. We can't talk about people, Henry Ford, the Vanderbilts. We are the Vanderbilts of this time frame. We are the Fords of this time frame. We're the Louis Vuittons of this time. We're the Hiltons of this time. We're the Marriott's of this time. It's our time. It's our turn. Ford is gone. It's our time. It's our time for our family to understand wealth. It's our time to take our wives on a trip for 30 days and not have to worry about anything. It's our time for them to get manicures and pedicures. It's our time to let them live a certain life. It's our time. It's our turn. It's our country. Let's eat it up. Let's enjoy it. I can. I can. I can. I will. I will. I will. I will my way through every situation, every trial, every triple A. I will my way through it. I don't care if it's cancer. I will my way through it. 
I don't care if it's MS. I will my way through it. I don't care if I'm struggling in school and I'm trying to get a degree. I will my way through it. I don't care if you fail the boards. Go again. I don't care if you fail the law exam. Go again. Will your way through it. Some things you can skill yourself through. Some stuff you got to will your way through. There are some things that you're naturally gifted at. Others you got to will your way through. I will my way through homelessness. I will my way through that GED. I will my way through that PhD. I will myself to 30 years plus of marriage. I will my way through to be a better father. I will my way through those books. I will. I will. Come on, I will. I will. Come on, I will. I will. I must. I hate to tell you this, but at some point you're gonna die. No, no, I'm just, I'm, I just, I hate to tell you that. I, I, I'm, I'm just being real. You're gonna die. No, 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 no. You're gonna die. So if you know you're gonna die, why are you playing it safe? Why you act like if you play it safe, you're gonna get another 30 years? I don't care who you are. You're not gonna make it to 200 years. I don't care if you're eating Brussels sprouts. They just don't get to 200 no more. So if you only got a 10 left, 20 yet left, 30 left in America, why not make it the best 20 you've ever had before? The best 30, the best 50 you've ever had before. I prayed. I told God I want another 18,325. That's, that's 50 years. I said, God, before I got here, I don't know how I got here, but now I know how. So can you give me 50 with this wisdom and this knowledge? because I kind of lucked up on the first 50, but I think I got it now. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Come on. I can. I will. I must. I can. I will. I must. Success and average have nothing to do with each other. Get rid of one of them. Your emotional, your mental side chick, it got to go. Which, which, one you, which one you with? You with, you with success or you with average? Which one you with? Those are two different paradigms, two different ideologies. Which one are you with? Uh, no, no, don't, don't answer it out loud. It's easy to say. Which one are you with? Because each one of them will require you to act differently, think differently, behave differently. Surround yourself with a different group of people. Success and average have nothing to do with each other. To do it with each other, so don't be average. Don't be good. Don't be great. Shoot for phenomenal, or you will be forgotten. We still talk about Mother Teresa. I don't know if she was a billionaire, but we still talk about Mother Teresa. We still talk about Martin Luther King. We still talk about Winston Churchill. There are millionaires and billionaires that are gone. We don't talk about them. Why? Wow, they might have made a lot of money, but apparently they weren't phenomenal. They weren't 120, meaning that they were great in every. So, so here's why I say don't be average. I've had the privilege of praying with uh, the only survivor's father from the Miami tragedy, the building that collapsed. And so his son was the only one that made it out. I have the privilege daily of praying with this young man, this father, as he's trying to get through the tragedy. Of course, the kid's mom was in that building. Here's what I tell people. Both sides didn't fall. Apparently one side might have been good or great. The other side was below average. And when that side crumbled, guess what happened to the other side? Even though it's still standing, they got to get out of there. They got to leave. And whoever built the, the, the construction people who built it, the people who manage it, I, I guarantee you under their names, they will never get another job. Why? It was said that they needed some repairs and they were going to get to it, but they hadn't gotten to it yet. Average. Average. People lost their lives because somebody was average. Listen to me very closely. You can be great in one area of your life, but if you're not great in the other one, you run the risk of that one falling down and everybody got to evacuate that one. So the reason why I try to be a phenomenal father, a phenomenal husband, a phenomenal businessman, a phenomenal servant, because I run the risk of if I'm one dimensional, all those other dimensions can come down. And so don't be average. At anything you do. All right, I'm about to move on. But can you imagine? Anybody remember BP and the oil spill? Yeah. You remember that? Yes. You remember what day that happened? That was on a Friday. Does that make sense? 
to anybody that that happened on a Friday? And most workers mentally on Friday, they're getting ready for the, he said the weekend, absolutely, or probably happy hour after work on Friday. <laughs> do you know what he didn't do or what she didn't do? They didn't shut the, they had one job, shut the valve, make sure the valve, one job. It wasn't complicated, one job. But because they were average, they were already going home and not doing their job the right way. That's why we can't be average. It's going to cost somebody's life. I don't know who at Tokyo with the brakes. I don't remember who the person was with the brakes, but they were average. Because you remember the brakes weren't, <laughs> and soccer moms was dying, and cars was crashed because they didn't do the brakes. Average. You had one job. Brakes. You got one job. That's your, that's your job to make sure when mothers get in this car. But you're thinking about the weekend. You got one job. When we're average, it doesn't just cost us. When we're average, it costs everybody else. We teach our children to be average. They watch us. They not, they, we could do all that talking. They, not, they don't care about your little talking, the stuff that you say. They watch what you do. They see when you cut corners. They see when you take shortcuts. They hear your conversations. I told my kids, my son, you may hate my guts. My daughter, you may hate my guts. I'm going to press you. I'm going to show you what phenomenal is. And you may be uncomfortable with it. You might like it. I don't care. But I'm going to show you what phenomenal look like. My son used to say at Michigan State, Dad, sometimes I hate being your father. I said, why? Because they think I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I told him my dad get up at 3, not me. <laughs> I'm keeping the press on you, son. I'm keeping the pressure on you. You will come into a multi-million dollar home. If you're going, if you're going to be great, you're going to have to be a billionaire. I'm putting the press on you. <laughs> I'm not making it easy for you. They made it easy for me. My father dropped out. My mother barely finished high school because she got pregnant with me. I'm making it hard. And it was easy for me to drop out. Why? Because everybody in my family did. And my grandma couldn't call me and check me when I gra didn't graduate. Why? Because none of her, she, didn't do, she didn't graduate and her kids didn't graduate. You can't check me on something they didn't do. Oh, my kids, you got to, <laughs> your, mom has, your mom's a registered nurse with a, with a master's degree. Your dad got a PhD. You have to at least finish high school. The press is on. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Stop making it easy. Stop making it easy. They don't need easy. They need a road map. They don't need easy. They need a blueprint. They don't need easy. They need a compass. And so when they watch us, they don't have to always like it. But when we die, they have something to... Being average means you are as close to the bottom. <laughs> Let's forget the top. <laughs> I don't know, they shouldn't even put that in there. I have to call brands. They don't put that in there. But being average means you are close. Who wants to be at the bottom? I don't even want to be in the bottom of a line at a restaurant. I go to Chick-fil-A early. I already know I get there late. It's about to be, I might be all the way in the back. No, I'm being honest. I go to cities and I, I walked into one restaurant and they, they was like, how long? It's a two hour wait. I was like, two hours? I walked in the restaurant like, like in case somebody watched my videos. I was just walking around. That's E.T. I'm like, absolutely. I need four seats, please. Hey, y'all, E.T. is in the building. Get him four seats. I don't even want to stand in the back of the line, let alone the back of life. You comfortable with, you, you in America? You comfortable with being average in America? Years ago, they were killing us in the Olympics, basketball. They was killing us. We were sending some of our greatest college basketball players. <laughs> Grown men was wearing them out. I don't know who, what committee got together, but they said, look, this is America. We're not average. They beating up on us. It's not, it don't look good. On, it just don't look good. Let's make a phone call. Next thing I know, they had Michael Jordan. <laughs> they had Magic. They had Larry Bird. They, they, I'm, I'm like, whoa. They, they, you Patrick Ewing, Stockton. They went in there. It was when like 110 to 50, killing them. <laughs> There's nothing about the USA that's average. We don't like to lose at anything. So why are you in a great country, but you feel comfortable being average? You about to mess up America. 
No, nah, you think I'm playing? I'm not playing. You think America's great just because it's great? You got it great. The question is, are you going to leave it great? You got it great. When you came here, it was great. What are you going to do when you leave to keep it great? I say I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. I don't say United States of America because I want to see somebody from Norway that can do it better than what I've been taught to do. I want to see somebody in Sweden do it better. I want to see somebody in Europe do it better. I represent the United States of America. I went to school here. I watch TV here. I listen to music here. I'm the best of the best. We don't do average in the United States of America. Nothing we do is average. So why do you feel comfortable being average? You might want to pack up and go to another country where they do average. You'd be like, welcome. They see you coming, welcome home. You average, we average, you average, we average. Come home. Welcome home. Welcome to average. Stop it. Stop being average. And stop being average and being envious of people who are doing better than you because they're phenomenal. You can't have what phenomenal people have when you average. Stop. I just, a couple of visuals, that's all. <laughs> he should have left a long time ago. He's the oldest quarterback in the NFL. You know why he keeps winning? Because when he was drafted, somebody said he was average. And he got a chip on his shoulder. Because he got drafted and he was one of the last ones to get drafted. And he said, y'all let all of them go before me? I will prove to the whole NFL that you got me twisted. You got me wrong. I'm great. I should have been picked number one. And somebody's going to pay the cost for me not. Got people calling you average. They don't even bother you. Your boss telling you you average. You could do more. You mad at your boss because he told you you weren't average. He told you you was average. You mad at the truth. <laughs> you got an attitude. She told me I was average. The nerve of her. <laughs> you, think, you, think, you, think they go to, you think they go to phenomenal people and call them average? If somebody calling you average, there's a reason why. There's some trait, characteristic behavior that you've demonstrated. Instead of being mad, take the constructive criticism and do something with it. I had a professor at Michigan State University. She told me, look, you pass in the classwork, but I just don't think you think critically enough to do a dissertation. I wasn't mad. She's a teacher. She, I'm sure she's seen dissertations before. So apparently she knew I wasn't a critical thinker. So guess what I did? I went on Google and was like, 10 ways to be a better critical thinker. I went to the library and got a whole bunch of dissertations and started reading them. And then I successfully completed my dissertation and sent her a copy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. Don't take offense. Make the adjustment. Don't be offended. Take the criticism and make the adjustment. Let's go. Overcoming failure. Listen to me. If you're successful in this room, you've, you've, you've reached any level of success, you know that failure is a part of it. It's the ego that gets in the way when you look at failure as something negative. Failure is just a way, some say, to try it again, but to try it differently and try it better. That, does that make sense? Yes. It doesn't mean quit, give up, poor me, overthink it, stop, say I'm not going to do it, woe is me. That's not what it means. It means that you did a great job, but you didn't execute. Everybody say it with me. Execution is worship. Execution. Come on. Execution is worship. Execution. Listen to me very closely. No, nobody is going to fire you if you execute. People fire you if you try hard <laughs> and don't execute. No, I, I, people come here and tell me, I worked so hard, but you didn't execute. I don't pay you to work hard. I pay you to execute. I pay, I, I pay you to execute. I pay whatever I'm paying you for. If you're doing marketing, I pay you to make me look good and bring more clients. If you're not doing that, I got to let you go. And if you're doing exactly what you did four years ago, I got to let you go. Because we should be getting better every year. Failure it's not a strike against you. Failure just means you're doing something wrong and you're doing something right, but you're not doing enough right and you need to figure out what you're doing wrong and you need to make the adjustments so you can execute. Nobody's firing people who execute. 
I'm going to say it one more time. I'll say it slow. People are fine, firing people who try. People are firing people who put forth effort. But nobody's firing people that get it done. I want you to write that down for me. And, and the level of execution, what percentage would you give yourself? I execute 70% of the time, 50% of the time, 80% of the time, 90% of the time, 100% of the time. Write that down. I execute. Watch this. The year Tom Brady went undefeated, because <laughs> I want to show you what it looks like. The year Tom Brady went undefeated, 16-0. and 0. I think they won one game, and they won the West, whatever that, their division is. What is it? What do you have? AFC South, AFC North. So if they were in the North, they won that. But what happened when they got to the Super Bowl? They lost the Super Bowl. You, you, think, you, you think the owner was like, we went undefeated, but we lost the Super Bowl. It's okay, guys. That same year, the Giants went 10 and 6 and didn't win their division. They were in the wild card. But they won the Super Bowl. Which one, which, which one you think they won? 16 and 0? Or you think they won? They won the Super Bowl. There are those of you who are 16 and 0, but you're not executing when it counts, when it matters. And you get upset because you go to your supervisor, you go to, you go to them and you say, but look, I went 18 and 0, but you didn't win the Super Bowl. I'd rather for you to go 8 and 8 and win the Super Bowl. So I want you to be honest. Write it down. What percentage? I need three or four people to be honest with me right now. We got one more. I need you to be honest with me. Who is not executing at 100? <laughs> Good. I love it. So write, write, what's your name, sir? Good. Can you, what's your, say it again. Tyler, Tyler, can you tell me, man, E, this is, this is probably why I'm not executing. No, no supervisor is going to say, you know what, I just feel so sorry for you. You're letting your doubt get in the way. <sighs> Makes my heart warm. I'm just being real. They're not going to say that. What, are, do they care? They might care. But in a capitalistic side, you got to execute. <sighs> so... All of us in the room who are dealing with doubt, get it fixed quick. Like it, go to a counselor or get a coach. But if you know you're doubting, fix that as soon as you can. Okay, there was somebody else. Be transparent with me. Why aren't you, yep, why aren't you executing more? I let, get in the way. I let details get in the way. That's why I hired Moose. I don't even try to do details. That's not my thing. It's me right here. You cut the mic on, I'm good. You start doing paperwork, I'm here. I just shrink with paperwork. It's just not my strength. So I take some of my money that I make and I hire somebody who's good at details. And I actually make more money by letting him do what he's great at and I do what I'm great at and what a wonderful combination. Make sense? Good, I need one other person on this side. Yep, right here in the back, yep. Good, you have habits that break your momentum. Distractions, can, can you share a distraction? No? It's okay. I'm gonna... <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot. Okay, so me, I got you. See, okay, you just said one. What was that one? What did he say? Netflix. Ooh, Netflix. Ooh. All right, that's, that's one. They got a lot of options on Netflix, right? But watch this. Watch this. That's a real, Netflix is a real thing. The movies getting caught up. I never watched movies until the pandemic. And I was, I was uh, one of them I was watching, uh, uh, I think it was Ozark. Like, I don't even watch movies. And I watched Ozark, and I was, like, binge watching. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, I got to see the next one. <laughs> and my wife was like, let's do one more. I was like, that was four. <laughs> We've been here for four hours. We don't read our Bible for four hours. Like, we, don't, like, we don't even go to church for four hours. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> I was like, an, an attic. Like, Ozark, Ozark. My wife said to me the other day, did they come out with season four yet? I'm like, I don't know, and I don't care. Right? But, but, but that's real. But here's the deal. If, why would we know we have something that's keeping us from the American dream? Let's get rid of all those distractions, go get help, and then once you blow up and you a millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire, whatever you, whatever you want to be, six-figure earner, whatever, then you have time to go watch all the Netflix you want. As a matter of fact, you can invest some money into Netflix and get every time you watch it, now you, you know what I'm saying, S&P 500. I don't know if Netflix is on there or not, but you can invest in Netflix. And every time you watch it, you're making money. Does that make sense? But, but when we're average, we don't think like that. Let me say something to you. There are enough great and phenomenal people in this room who want to help you become phenomenal and great. Listen to me very closely. When you get to a certain level, 
I'm not being disrespectful. You might be in the back. I don't mean any harm. But I just know historically, <laughs> I used to sit in the back when I wasn't an A student. I kind of started coming close to the front when I became an A student. When you get to a certain level in your life, you only want to pour back into people. You're not interested in making more money. That's going to come from whatever investments or whatever you've done. You want to pour back. So if you're average, there's some phenomenal people up here who want to help you. All right, let's look at this real quick. All right, I want to get you guys out of here. Let's go. I have missed more than 900 shots in my career. Failure. Ooh, nine thought. Ooh, Michael Jordan? No. 900. 900. 900. Michael Jordan, the greatest, one of the, considered one of the greatest NBA players to ever lace him up, he missed 9,000 shots. I lost almost 300 games. Not MJ. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game when he shot and missed. I fell over and over and over again in my life. And that's why I succeeded. You get to make a choice. Is failure going to break you or is failure going to make you? You get to decide failure doesn't. I think Mike, maybe his seventh year before he won his first title, but made Chicago Bulls into a known franchise. Three steps. First, accept. We cannot improve until we accept that we are, we, uh, what we're currently doing isn't working. Let your ego go. It's just not working. Doesn't make you a bad person. Right? You just got the system. Something's wrong with your system. Michael Jordan had a poor system. Phil Jackson came, gave him a great system. It's called the triangle offense, and he won six titles. He took that same triangle offense to the Lakers, and Kobe won five championships. <laughs> Sound like we got a Laker fan in here. <laughs> assess, and we talk about the inability to self-assess. Focus on facts, not your feelings. When assessing the situation, what specifically went wrong? You know, man, my marriage... Oh, boy, I was tough for a while. My wife, you know, she would say something to me. I would always take it personal. My wife was like, yo, I'm not talking about you. I'm your, I'm your greatest cheerleader. I'm your greatest fan. But I'm trying to tell you that you, the way you're doing it is wrong. Like, stop what you're doing right now and go. I'm like, you think you're not my mama? You can't make me stop and do it right now? She's like, I know you. If you don't do it right now, you're going to forget. You don't know me. Hey, sweetheart, I'm in uh, Texas. I forgot my, uh, can you, uh. Can you send that over to me? I'm just being honest. I used to always take it personal. She's saying I'm insufficient when she corrects me, that I'm not the man when she corrects me. That's not what she was saying. She's saying facts. You're forgetful. <laughs> it doesn't make you a bad human being. You're just forgetful. So let's create a system where when you walk in the house, you put your keys here. You put your wallet here. You put your stuff here. <laughs> Don't tell me where to put my, my mama used to try to tell me I and you're, you should have listened to your mama, and you didn't. <laughs> so now I have to be your mama. <laughs> Adjust. Nothing changes if nothing changes. Make the adjustment, right? Milwaukee, I don't know what happened, but by game three, four, five, and six, they made the adjustment. They made the adjustment. I have a Bucks fan in the building. <laughs> Are you from Milwaukee? Okay, I got a Bucks fan in the back. All right, so accept, right? Assess, adjust. All right, failure is not falling down. Failure is staying down. All right? It's not falling down. Okay. If you consider yourself to be super, you know, like next level successful, right? And, and, and again, I'm not trying to call anybody out, but you have reached a certain level, right? You know you're there. Can you just, can you be transparent for them and tell them that you've fallen? If you're success, super successful and you've fallen, you've made mistakes, can you just raise your hand so they can see you? Just so, just let them see that. We, okay. Everybody, every, we all fail. We just didn't stay down. It took me 12 years to get a four-year degree. 12 years. But I got it. And then I got a master's degree. And then I got a PhD. And it took me eight years to get the PhD. But guess what? On all my certificates, none of them say how long it took me. <laughs> none of them. They all say I have the same privileges and rights as the cum laude and the summa cum laude. We all are alums. <laughs> they don't have any special privileges. Matter of fact, I have more. I'm just being honest. When we did the little pandemic thing, Mike, Magic Johnson was on there, Steve Smith, and I was on there. Even though it took me eight 
even though it took me 12 to get a four. Are you listening to me? It's not in falling that makes us failures. It's in not getting up that makes us failures. And you get to decide if you get up or you don't get up. Good. All right, my last one. Here we go. All right, mindset. Ah, this is the one. Mindset is everything. It all starts with how you think. Do you know there was a time that I could never be a multimillionaire, and I couldn't be a multimillionaire because I grew up in Detroit, Michigan? And everybody in Detroit told me, they said to me, Eric, if you're going to be accepted, if you're going to be affirmed, you finish high school and you get a job with Ford, GM, or Chrysler. That was it. I'm telling you, you from, you from Detroit, you come home and say, Ma, I got a job. Where? Chrysler. Where? The plant. My, mwah, give me a kiss, son. I love you. I started working with the Bob Proctors of the world. i never forget. I was with Bob Proctor in San Diego. I was speaking, and Bob pulled me to the side. He's like, E, how much you charge? I was like, whoa, I don't even know you like that. <laughs> it was like, it's our first time meeting. You got to get real into me. <laughs> like, you don't know how much I'm making. He was like, well, you know, like per engagement. I was like, I don't know, like five, ten. He's like, five, ten grand? I was like, yeah. He was like, you should be charging at least 20000 I was like, 20000 he was like, yeah, he's at 20000 I was like, okay. Went home, called my agent, 20000 My agent was also from Detroit and was a part of a working class where you get hourly wages. And we've never seen $20,000 at one time. And so when she would say twenty, they wouldn't give it to her because she didn't say it How much does he charge? I, 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 I. <laughs> I'm telling my age, right? But y'all remember happy days with the Fonz? Yeah. When the Fonz had to say he was sorry, I'm, 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 I'm. they was like, we understand Fonz, you don't have to say it. Yeah. So she would say 20. They'd say 12, get 12 it is, bingo, 12. <laughs> I'm like, what did they say? She said, they said 12, I said, oh, okay. I remember, you know, a couple times I got 20, I was like, where 20? So I saw Bob Proctor again. He's like, how much you charge? I said, 20. He said, you only charging $20,000? I said, you told me $20,000. He said, no, I didn't. I told you at least $20,000. But when I say 75 to 100, now I promise you, I say it like it's a steal. No, 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 listen to what I'm telling you. My agent, when we saw, I saw somebody the other day, I said, look, I'm going to charge you 75, and the work that you want me to do afterwards, I'm going to need equity because I'm about to turn your whole company around. <laughs> Listen to what I'm telling you, and you better hurry up and sign the contract in the next 30 days because if you don't, it's going up. Why? Because I know what I'm capable of. Watch this. I went from a worker's mindset to a thinker's mindset to a planning man's set. Oh, you missed what I just said. I don't have a, I don't go hourly no more. I understand when I finish doing what I'm doing, your people are going to work in a way that they've never worked before, and it's going to come back millions fold to you. And then I also know I'm bringing the anointing when I come, and when that anointing get on some of your people, they're going to leave here, and their whole life going to be changed. I know that's worth 75000 <laughs> It's a mindset. There are those of you in this room, you don't need another book. There are those of you in this room, you don't need another course. And I'm not telling you not to take one. There are those of you in this room, you don't need to do anything else. You are enough as you are. You just don't believe in yourself in the way you're supposed to believe in yourself. And it comes out when you're talking to other people. They sense that you don't believe it. I've had to look a million, I had to look a million, a many dogs in their eye and say, you don't want this. I'm running, I'm just running. You know what I'm saying? You go to these different cities, you just get out the hotel, you just start running, and then I just run in the wrong neighborhood, and I see a dog room, and I just stop. Like, I'm, I'm not running, bro. I promise you, you don't want these. You don't want these problems. I don't know where your owner is, but you better hope they come and get you. <laughs> I'm coming right at you. I'm coming right at you, and I'm looking you straight in your eye, and I'm telling you, you don't want these problems. Because I've seen too many dogs attack people who had fear. They could sense it. They could smell it. But I've also seen 
cougars. I've seen mountain lions chase human beings, and they stop and look, and I've seen that mountain lion run because that mountain lion can sense in their spirit that, oh, yeah, he not playing, she not playing. The world is not giving you what you deserve because you don't think you deserve it, and you need to change your mindset. Why are you timid? Why are you passive? Why are you afraid? You would have way more business if you call and make them understand why they need it. You're making it like it's an option. When I make that phone call, you better, you better hurry up and sign this because you're about to bring your family into wealth. You're going to die. The question is, when you die, do you leave your family the way they are or do you leave them? You better, you better, have your, you better say it and not just say the script. You better say it like you mean it. And if you change your mindset, mindset is important because we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we use to create them. You better change the way you think. All you need to do is change your thinking and you change your world. You don't need to change anything else. Hawaii. I never even called. There's a young lady that I know that lives in Hawaii. She's uh, the fiance to a, a, a church member. I never even told nobody in the church I was going to Hawaii. She just went, she just went and she called me a couple days ago and said, I, I just, something told me to call you. How are you? I said, I'm great. She says, how's first lady? I said, she's doing wonderful. I said, you know what? I'm glad you called. We coming to Hawaii. She said, well, the hotel you're going to is about 30, 40 minutes from my house. I was like, okay, we're going to stay at the Ritz, and then I want to stay at the Four Seasons. So we'll do this for four or five days. We'll do that for four or five days. She just sent me a message today and said, yo, I just went to the Ritz-Carlton, and I walked through it, and I looked at the restaurants, and I looked at the beach. Like, here's pictures of it. I know you and your wife. I don't think this is the hotel you want to stay at. I went to this hotel, this hotel, this hotel, took pictures for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm so strong in my spirit that I want my wife to have the best 50th ever that somehow in Hawaii, my, that spirit was felt and somebody became my tour agent. I ain't even asked to be my tour agent and drove 40 minutes and went to three or four different hotels and gave me all the specs on them and told me if I had a choice, I would choose this. The Four Seasons is great, but this, this doesn't match your, match my, you've never stayed with me before. You don't know what my wife wants or she doesn't want, but I put that mindset, I put that out there, that this will be my wife's best birthday ever. And the universe is hearing me and said, we're going to do what we got to do to make sure this is her best birthday ever. Last one. You cannot have a positive life with a negative mindset. That was me as a high school dropout. That was me homeless. That was me, the little kitty cat. But the reason why I never killed myself in that abandoned building, because I always saw me as a lion. That was me when I got the GED. That was me in the sixth year that I didn't finish, in the seventh year that I didn't finish, the eighth year I didn't finish college, the ninth year I didn't finish college. You know statistics say that if you don't finish in six years, you probably won't graduate. I went 12 years, but I always saw the lion. The problem with you is you looking in the mirror and you keep seeing the kitty cat and you can't see the lion. The lion is there too. They're both there. Your eyes determine what you see. You got to change your mindset. As I leave, you're standing, you said, I need to change my mindset. I do. Man, E, I got a low self-esteem. Man, E, I don't believe in myself in the way I should believe in myself. I want you to stand right now and I want you to declare that your, your future, you're going to be your better you in the future. There's nothing we can do about today, but in the future, we're going to work on the future, and your future is going to be better than any day you've ever had in your life. We focusing on your future. Come on, give me some energy. This is your future. Come on, this is your future. This is your kid's future. Say it with me. I'm going to change my mindset. I'm going to change my mindset. I deserve it. It's mine. It's my time. It's my turn. Come on, it's my time. It's my turn. Come on, it's my time. It's my turn. If not now, when? If not me, who? It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. Come on, it's my time. Mean it, it's my time. Come on. 
And the thing I love about America, it's enough pie for all of us. I leave you one more time. I can. I will. I must. I can. I will. I must. There's a lot of America waiting for you to experience. There's a lot of money for you. There's a lot of wealth for you, happiness, health. There's a lot with your name. There's gifts with your name on that you haven't opened yet. It's time for you to open your gifts. You're an American. You're a citizen. You have rights. Claim your rights. You are a citizen. You have certain rights as a U.S. citizen. Claim your rights. Claim their beaches waiting on you, beachfront homes waiting on you. Whenever I went to the bank, Last year, my wife has multiple sclerosis. The Lord has blessed her, though. You wouldn't be able to tell. She's doing phenomenal. But dark days and, you know, cold days don't work for her body. And so I bought her a home in San Diego. Somebody said, why San Diego? Why San Diego? Because the weather is the same all year long. All year. So it won't bother her MS. It's always 70s. When I was buying a house, the lady told me at the bank, she says, how much do you want to sell your house for in Michigan? I said, what? Mindset. How much are you selling your home for in Michigan? I said, selling what? She said, your home in Michigan. I said, my home in Michigan. Did I say anything about, <laughs> did I say anything about selling my home in Michigan? Did we have that conversation? But in her mind, she couldn't see somebody being bicoastal. So I was recently in my property in San Diego, and all the neighbors asked me, where, where you been? I said, at my home. I said, we haven't seen you. I said, no, in Michigan. They said, well, when are you coming back to San Diego? I said, in the winter. <laughs> they said, you bought a, mil a multi-million dollar home for the winter? I said, yeah. They said, why? I said, because it's my, it's my narrative. It's my narrative. It's my life. And I can choose to do, I pastor in Michigan. I go, are you hearing me? When are you going to live your life and stop living other people's lives? When are you going to start living your reality, <laughs> your world? I can, I, can. I, will. I will, I must. I can, 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 I will, I must. It's your boy E.T. Make the rest of your life the best of your life. Thank you for your time. Well, people say eight hours, like, bro, no one human is the same. No one human needs exactly what another human needs. So for some of us, we're not wired, you know, for eight. Hey, I could take a 10 minute nap and I'm telling you, I'm ready to go. Um, my wife need like three hour nap. Like she got to put on a gown the whole nine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs>